Hi, very good morning. It's Jim from Avstar. Let me tell you something. Have you ever taken time out to read this book? Because I did several times and towards the last of those times I took my time to read the book like sipping a glass of red wine and I'll reveal some things I found which I'm sure other scientists in my field a long time ago to name one Isaac Newton who would lock himself away at night trying to decode the Bible I'm just I guess the same in that respect only I don't have to lock myself away to read the book you know and uh, when I really started to understand some of the things I'm about to show you in this book um, it became clear to me that there was definitely something else in our universe at work you know for a lot of us we don't have the luxury and the affordability of time uh, to spend in such things and uh, you know I guess it's only with putting the effort in that you get things back out so you know we're at the time right now take a few minutes to think about that we are definitely at that time right now where things are going to start to change in our lives and it's like the seasons you know in the summer the tree will put its fruits out it will have leaves on and in the winter the fruits will perish and the leaves will fall off and the tree won't look the same and we are in the winter right now and I could never have ever got this far without something else being present in my life and you know what that door was never closed to me like it seems to be for a lot of people the door has always been open you know I could never have produced the Trimax system that we are you know taking for granted right now you know without the assistance of something else and I just want to briefly talk about that you know it took two years to learn how to program and write the program for the Trimax system but before we were successful at the end there was a serious problem we was pushing um, the breakout board the computer breakout board beyond its means you know it didn't have very large capacity and so that the program that it was written on had to be very lean very lean you know because it was overwritten the program was and it was asking the computer breakout board to do more than what it was capable of doing and you know at that time um, we was talking to Brad in the United States who was an ex Navy SEAL and his son worked for Langley um, his son I'm not going to mention his name uh, you know I shouldn't have even mentioned Brad's name but I did but there you go um, his son worked for Langley and he was in charge of programming all the computer screens on that private what looks like a private jet that spies on the Spratly Islands and he was with me for about four nights trying to you know get the Trimax system to write onto the SD cards and he tried his best he said to me at the end Gene I don't know why this won't compile and when we talk about compile it means uh, download onto the board its instructions so that it can do the work and he tried his best for those nights with me for hours literally hours 
and I was honoured to have his skill set, you know, with me, uh, his time, and I knew his expertise, and I knew what he was really capable of, but we failed. And I was left just looking at what I'd got, which was, you know, uh, everything recording. Uh, it would record the heading of the, the position of the magnetic north pole, but it just wouldn't write it down onto the SD card. And what that meant was we was not going to get any uh, data in any quantitative form. And then, you know, three or four weeks later, through just perseverance and when I say this, I was not alone. I definitely was not. You know, something I did in those four weeks, towards the end of those four weeks, um, turned out being the right thing. And with one click of the button at that point in time, you know, we got everything we'd put together over those two years successfully working as we wished. And my friend said to me at the time, he said, if electronics and uh, programming was on a scale of 1 to 20, what you have done there is absolutely at a scale of 17. You know, it doesn't get any harder than what you was doing writing that program. And let's face it, what we've got today is a wireless system that can communicate over a kilometre. It doesn't need to, um, you know, it's overkill uh, with the NFR24s, I think they are, you know, the transmitters and receivers that we included in it. Um, you know, we didn't need to go that down that route, but we did. We added that into the program, so it transmitted it. So there was a lot, lot of detail there. You know, it needed to uh, be written in a specific way so that it could transmit from the TriMag system that is in my loft space right now to the master and then write it down on the SD card. You know, if it's very easy now. It's all, all the work has been done to um, get to that point uh, where we have that data. Whenever we choose to pull out the SD card, we can look at where the position of the magnetic north pole is right now. But I can't take the credit for that. Even though, you know, a good friend of mine in Langley uh, didn't succeed at writing the program that worked, I had to, you know, resort to something else. Something else had obviously seen that I'd put a big effort in and decided not to let me down you know decided to lean on my shoulder and clean up the uh, program you know so that the, we could get what we get today it is a gift guys so why are we looking at the bible the king james version and it doesn't need to be that it could be any any uh, religion in the world because what I've found with all religions that I've studied and I'm not a theologian you know uh, by any means but just out of curiosity you know um, when I stumbled on a few things in life I thought my god there must be more to this and obviously you know the more I looked the more I found you know for some reason I want to mention uh, seven keys in life and that these keys all unlock each another door and um, I don't know whether we're going to mention all these doors that you can unlock but if you've got a certain amount of knowledge you certainly can open a certain amount of these doors and these doors are not mentioned in the Bible there's lots of mentions of sevens in the Bible and twelves and three scores and obviously 666 and you know just talking on the the triple six numbers yeah if you uh, look in the Bible at um, the nature of the beast it's going to tell you its number is six three score and six 
three score is just 20. A score is a 20, so three score is six. I don't know why they particularly use that that terminology in the Bible, but, you know, it says the nature of the beast is uh, blah, 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 and its number is three score and six, or six, six, six. And you know what? You only have to use your brain a little to look through the Bible and see if that number is ever mentioned again. And it is mentioned, I believe, in Kings. And um, it says that uh, it came to King Solomon one day, uh, six, three score and six talents of gold. And obviously gold was the currency of the day. You know, gold and silver was the only currency in them days. So what it's telling us, I believe, is that the nature of the beast is money. And, you know, it, and we can see that clearly today, how, how much money can corrupt people. <coughs> so... What, what's my point to all this? Is that, you know, you're going to hear a lot of people talking about that we're in the end days right now. And at the beginning of the video, I was saying to you, you know, that the tree is starting to shed its leaves. And I truly believe that what we're seeing take place now is definitely a turning point. And I'm not saying it's the end times by any means, because I believe even when some of us feel this is the end you know there is a lot more to come after that and there will be it will be on a biblical scale uh it will be totally uh out of text when we do actually experience the end times but i believe that we are probably uh witnessing the first of the fruit fall from the tree and also at the same time, you know, the first leaves fall off. There, there is no loyalty, first of all, on YouTube whatsoever. Um, you know, it's, it's in my experience, it's full of a lot of unhonest people, um, especially those that have run the channels. You know, I've tried to keep it very honest. I've never lied to anybody. You know, I've told them that I'm a scientist and recently showed my credentials showed them the equipment that we use here at the observatory but you know when it comes down to all the others and let's face it you know suspicious observers is one of the worst out there you know I've had private conversation with him many years ago and worked him out straight away he's a bad person he is not a good person he is very bad he started to use some of my work that I'd shared with him. And then he turned round and said that I'd give him the work that I told him about for him to review. And that was what he told his subscribers, that I'd given him work to review. I've never done anything of the sort. I've never given him work to review at all. And he, you know, why would I do that? He's not a scientist. I'm, I'm not sure that he has any, any, any education at all other than, you know, what he talks about all of the time, you know, about, uh, I can't even for the life of me even remember about what it is he does talk about, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's just come to mind. Due diligence, that's his favourite word. Nothing else to back it up whatsoever other than the word due diligence. And yet, you know, uh, YouTube allow him to be monetized and they allow him to talk. And if you take a look on YouTube right now, those that are silenced, that are, are not allowed monetization 
are the ones that are talking some truths. We're the people that, um, you know, the governments don't want you to listen to because maybe we're more influ influential or maybe we're talking more truth than they'd like you to hear. I've decided um, I'm going to share one of those keys I was talking about with you in life. And, uh, you know, I hope you understand it, what it is I'm sharing with you. You know, we're looking at the nine times table up to ten times nine. And there's a red line there. And what you'll notice is that the uh, answers change from the point of five times nine equals 45 to six times nine equals 54. What you'll notice is that the numbers uh, reverse. It's like looking in the mirror uh, at the answers. For instance, three and six, uh, then you have six and three, seven and two, and then two and seven, one and eight, and then you have 81. It's the only number in our times table system that does this. And it's pretty unique and you shouldn't just overlook it for the fact that it's just a coincidence because it's obviously not because the nine is a number that is very important in our universe and what I've been led to uh, discover which I'll share with you is that you know we see repeating all the time you know in maths uh, always the most important number is a nine for some reason so that I believe in my view, that the, there is a binary system uh, that is taking place. It's written in nines and zeros, and that's where we arrive at the universal equation, which I'll show you just shortly after this. We talk about this, but, you know, we have, we have nine planets in our solar system. Um, the elites uh, would love you to believe there is only eight, and they removed the eighth planet, but let's go back to the um, Assyrians, uh, they knew there was nine planets. They knew the outer, the last outer planet, even its colour. And we could, we could not prove that until the last 40 years, at least, until we put the um, celestial telescope out there, you know, Hubble, and uh, zoomed in on Pluto. And what did we find? It was described as... The Sumerians said it was a jade green colour and we found out when we put the space telescope in orbit that it was actually jade green colour. So there is nine planets in our solar system and some people would think that that's a coincidence. You know our numerical system shows us that a complete circle is made of 360 degrees so you have the three and the six together and the zero which means nothing you end up with you know a number nine um we can see uh in the bible if we look at it that there are numbers that are repeated repetitively uh for instance you know the wall of the city that descends in uh you know um the end of the bible it talks about this city that's descending from the heavens and that its wall length is 144 cubits in length for 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 9. Uh, it talks about the 12 tribes of Israel and again it makes up the number 9. And you know I've showed you um, in the flower of life how these geometrical shapes uh can only equate in one specific way that make up a number nine. You know, this is something that, you know, obviously uh, we understood many, many thousands of years ago, but we've lost the information too and its relevance and importance. But I'm going to show you just a couple of these things. So we're looking at the flower of life. You can see the numbers one to nine arranged in a specific way within that 3D cube if you look closely enough, with the corner stone removed. Obviously, what's inside the corner stone is a star or a sun, uh, but more in particular, the numbers, the way they line up with each other is eight, 
is opposite to 1 and if you add those numbers together you get 9 7 is opposite to 2 you get 9 6 and 3 9 again and 5 and 4 is obviously 9 and the powerful number amongst all these that is no opposite is the number 9 it's drawing our attention to it with without no uh, shadow of a day you know we have nine planets circling our sun you know again the number nine and of course you can see some of the numbers i've written on the side there uh four times nine uh equals 36 and then four times 36 equals 144 and here we have a number that is commonly mentioned in the bible as i as i told you um where else does this lead it leads to something very very special in terms of mathematics and numbers and the universal language which i will show you hopefully you know this key i'm giving you will you know be a positive thing in your life you know and uh, you'll realize that you you know you didn't have to have faith in something completely to believe although that is the requirement of a religion but if you have the knowledge of something that you can't disrespute then you know something is absolutely there and that requires no faith at all you know this is like religion for the weak people you know the people that couldn't be strong enough to have just pure faith in something else being there you know this is the proof of the existence of something out there so if you're lucky enough you're going to end up with something like this uh, which is a unique uh, equation where you can put any number into this equation uh, and follow the procedures there and you'll end up with just one of two possibilities it will either equate to a number nine or a zero and there's not there's not another equation on this planet like this and um, I know some of you that have been following me for a long time will remember when you know I come across this and obviously I shared it uh, I've shared it so many times over the years um, you know, a lot of people that have seen it don't know where it came from, but this came from a dream. Yep, it came from a dream I had. I woke up, I wrote it down, and then pondered over the next few weeks about what this very unique equation was all about and come to the conclusion this was something very far out there coming from obviously uh, what I would say in just plain terms maybe given by God I don't know just being honest with you just putting it out there because you know people have seen this um, you know in some uh, very well known organisations okay I'll just mention one NASA uh you know, they looked at it, they said, you know, that they was quite surprised. They'd never seen something reduce, you know, a, an equation reduce uh, down to such uh, a thing as just two two numbers as this did. And, um, you know, like me, uh, not quite knowing what to do with it, but obviously, um, the point of this is, is that, you know, in science and this level of... Um, technological advancement what we know is that first of all in a f in physics you know we write things down in maths and prove its plausibility and then we apply uh with everything else after that point you know first we use maths again this number whatever uh we apply a number to or let's say we we apply a number to a cube or a sphere or a cylindrical shape you know we we end up with a number that represents that shape we put that shape into the universal equation which is what we're looking at and then we get it reduced down to two numbers you know eventually we're going to end up with a binary system 
you know, binary as what we know it today consists of ones and zeros. And despite what most people think, you know, we've been using binary systems for thousands of years. I know that might come a shock to people, but only recently have we used binary and digital coding, things like that, you know, whatever you're, when you're using your mobile phone, it's using binary, you know, the, the most highest level of technology or programming uses a binary system or machine code in a binary form. Um, so, you know, here we have an equation that shows, you know, everything within our universe is obviously operating on a binary system and therefore there's no no coincidence that, you know, when we look at our planets that orbit our sun like our, our own Earth, you know, we see that there's nine. And, you know, there's looking at the, uh, you know, the larger scale of things, but we can also zoom into the macro scale and, you know, we see the same thing happening um, in the double helix of our uh, DNA and other uh, aspects of objects and living things in our life you know it all has the the code within it so you know you got something here more than you would ever get from any other channel in youtube i promise you not and you know i was a lucky person to be in receipt of such knowledge you know and you know for you to get given a key to understanding something about your life and the life in which you live is is a privilege because there are not many people first of all that can give you such a key and there are not many people in life that have been privileged enough to be given a key themselves so you've got something today more than what you would have had moments ago before you watch this video and you won't get that from anywhere else I promise you that. And it's a gift. You just need to think about it a little bit more to totally appreciate what it is I've shared with you in this video. Um, going back to the beginning of the video, we was talking about, you know, the winter tree losing its fruit and then the leaves after that. And, you know, me talking about people uh, mentioning that we are living in end times right now. Well, I think it will become apparent to you when when it needs to, I suppose, for you to realise um, that you're living in your own end times. Because not everybody is in there, and not everybody will experience end times together. Um collectively end times we all know what that means it means we all experience it at the same time we're probably not far from that but for a lot of us we are already there and the reason why i've produced this video is because we're probably close to that ourselves at the observatory you know there's not a lot of wax left uh to keep that little flame going We, we tried to tell people months ago and um, you know people just saw it as you know oh, it will carry on going it will carry on going but it won't eventually the wax will run out the candle will go out the light will diminish that's a very sad thing because in this time of darkness even the smallest amount of light can vastly you know, be seen and give people hope. So there you go, guys. Here is one key given to you to use as you wish. You know, for most people, the door is locked. But for, for you guys, the door is open. You can open it whenever you want. There's a link down there in the description if you want to help support what we do. And I will say what I usually do. You take care of your loved ones. As always, bye for now.